So in this video, I'm going to be sharing with you what's in my camera bags. This is very useful to you if you're in the market for a new camera, if you want to buy a new camera or you are considering one of these, or maybe you just want to actually build your own camera bag with equipment and gear that you are actually going to use and not the one that will just sit on your shelf. So first up is the A6 300. I have two bodies by the way. I have this one and the one filming me right now. This has been my workhorse. I use it to shoot absolutely everything. Events, weddings, documentaries. I even use it to film a movie. The image is good. The, the autofocus is decent. I use it very well with my gimbal, my Ronin M. Two major problems with this camera. One is the battery life. It's not great, especially when you're shooting 4K. And two is the overheating. Combine those two and it can really be annoying. Do I get around with it for power? Obviously, you just need to buy a couple of those batteries i find that between four to five takes me an entire day to shoot and then to solve the overheating problem whatever you know you're going to be recording something that's let's say more than five minutes or seven minutes at a stretch you want to step down to hd if you're filming hd with these cameras it will not overheat but then when you now want to film b-rolls and other things you can now switch back to 4k and obviously turn off the camera whenever you're not filming and you'll enjoy this camera is quite well. My second, or you can say my third camera is the Blackmagic Pocket 6K. This I've mainly used for commercial movies and I've actually used it for a documentary. <laughs> it's not the best for run and gun, but the image quality, I mean, Blackmagic is known for their image quality. It's amazing. And also the, the codex, I mean, I'm getting Blackmagic RAW 6K, 60 frames per second, you know, I can do 4K 120 frames per second. It's very sharp. I mean, we use this as a B cam to the C300 Mark II when shooting a TV series last year. The downside to it is the battery life. Using these guys, you're just, you're, 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 no, I, I don't. So what I do is I have this for the Sony MPF, something like that batteries for some quick run and gun movements. But most of the time, I rig it up with my V-Man battery that powers this camera for an entire day without any issues so yeah and then last but definitely not least the canon c70 i picked this up a couple of months ago just been having a great time you know filming with this camera it's so good i was in the market for a b cam slash an upgrade to my blackmagic 6k and i happen to have been on a documentary last year where we shot with both the 6k and this camera and i saw that um editing both of them together was just smooth so that really put my eye on this camera and eventually i decided to get it but i'm going to do a separate video diving deeper into why i went for this camera i actually don't have a lot of lenses and that's because i have really just been using different um, camera bodies over the years and so i would usually just get one camera with one lens for a while and then i'll change the camera and i'll sell the lens but these are here to stay so i'm definitely going to be building more on my lenses but right now for my sony cameras one of them came with a kit lens 16 to 50 millimeter wide open at 16 you get a 3.5 aperture it's not great but the image stabilization is amazing whenever i'm on the running m this lens is on on one of the sony's and it really uh, smoothens out uh, the motion and the movement so yeah next sony lens that i use is my baby this is my favorite lens it is the sigma 30 millimeter f 1.4 i don't know if there's a new one now but it's actually been rated as one of the sharpest ap SC lens on the market. It's very sharp. I mean, this lens makes this one look like it's out of focus. That's how sharp this lens is. The downside to it is it doesn't have image stabilization like the kit lens and the autofocus as well is not the best. It does struggle a little bit with the autofocus. A small price to pay for how sharp and lovely the image is on this lens so my third sony lens is actually the one filming us right now it is the sony fe 50 millimeter 1.8 it definitely has a lot more contrast than the sigma but it it's really good before i got the c70 i usually use one of my sony's as the b cam to my pocket 6k and i would slap the 50 millimeter on it and i never had issues with it those are my lenses for my sony cameras and then for the Blackmagic and the C70, obviously they both have EF. Actually the C70 is RF, but I got an adapter to change it 
to EF. And my main workhorse lens for now, the Sigma 18 to 35 millimeter f 1.8 this lens is legendary i think it's probably eight to ten years old now but it's still highly sought after really sharp for a zoom lens lets in a lot of light i love the smoothness of the focus ring but it's heavy <laughs> it is heavy but it's 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 so well built so this is what i'm always using with my black magic and my c70 for now i will be getting some other lenses right now my two favorite lenses are sigma so i'll probably be getting a sigma maybe 50 or 85 if there is for um, both my cameras and speaking of lenses i do have my filters and my step up rings i have the nd filters for my mavic air 2 nd filters for my mavic air 1 i have my polarizer filter my main workhorse i have my variable nd filter that i use for every single shoot so coming back to cameras this time around flying cameras i have the mavic air 2 this is my drone that i use right now i also have the mavic air 1 this was my first drone and i still have it before i now upgraded to the mavic air 2. one was quite small and easy to travel. I liked the image a little bit better than the first Mavic drone. It doesn't have OcuSync, it uses Wi-Fi, so I always ran into the drone getting disconnected. I couldn't fly it too far away, especially when there were masts around. And then the noise, it's quite a noisy drone. So yeah, I would say those are the downsides. This guy sort of um, solved most of the issues I had with this one. The noise is not as annoying. This has OcuSync. In fact, I think this even has a strong one i'm not sure so i can go a lot further the image is a lot better it actually does 60 frames per second even though i rarely shoot in 60 frames per second i just do the normal 4k and 30 frames uh, per second and the image is so much better than and this one speaking of drones and movement i do have the ronin m my gimbal which i've had since 2017 it's what i still use till today i am considering getting the ros3 to work quite well with this with my c70 but um, i still don't like one-handed gimbals i'm just old-fashioned i like that two-handed one so if i must get a one-handed gimbal then i definitely need to get one that has the two-handed extension let me wonderful memory cards this is just a random case i got from Cura photo i like the hardness of the case helps to protect my cards i have 64s 32s 128s they're about i don't have any 256 or 512 i don't want to have so much of uh, a day's work on a single card just in case that card should actually go bad i don't want to lose all of my work for my black magic i do have a samsung t5 one terabyte ssd to handle the high codex and i also have a one terabyte ssd transcend that i use with my atomos ninja 5 so I mostly use it to get the most out of my Sony cameras when I'm able to rig it up. And obviously it also serves as an external monitor for my Blackmagic since it doesn't have a flip out uh, screen. If your camera cannot do waveforms or false color and you're serious about your cinematography, I honestly and would recommend you get an external monitor. It doesn't have to be the Atomos, but get an external monitor that has some of those video uh, features, focus speaking and all of that, you will not regret it. In terms of audio, my go-to mic, my go-to boom mic is the NTG4 clean audio is phantom powered rich sound i still prefer the ntg3 though because i just feel like that mic is so good but it's not cheap and you know i don't make money from sound majorly so it just doesn't make a lot of sense putting that amount of money into audio when i can get something like this for wireless i use the rode go which is what i have on right now it's connected directly to the sony and um, this is what it sounds like i don't always have to use the lapel it has the mic inbuilt so it can just be pinned to uh, your shirt and then of course if i'm not recording directly into the camera i have the zoom h5 so whenever i'm using the boom mic with the xlr cable it goes straight into here even with the road go as well 
and to monitor all of that i use the behringer headphones the studio headphones you don't want to be using your traditional headphones because it will not give you an accurate um, monitoring of your audio noise cancellation headphones to be able to silence the noise around you for you to really hear and monitor the levels of your recording i don't have that much lights either in terms of lighting i have the sl60w i have another godox 1000 watts bicolor light panel which is actually lighting me up right now i have a smaller uh, godox led um, light which is giving me this side light right here i seem to use a lot of godox products funny enough these are my three point lighting that's my three point uh, kit those are the lights that i use all the time but obviously for other shoots i rent use aperture lights i have a 60 watts for now 1k for now kino flows depending on the project that will determine the lights that i bring out and the lights that i rent so that is it hopefully this has been useful to you in case like i said you're trying to pick up one of these gears for yourself or you're trying to build your own uh, camera bag and uh, these are definitely things that I use all the time they don't sit in my drawer collecting dust or anything like that I actually use this on 90% or probably 95% of my shoots if this is your first time on this channel do hit the subscribe button for more content like this smash that like button and more importantly share your thoughts in the comments if there's if you have recommendations I'm definitely looking for another lens to go with my uh, C70 and my black magic so please do recommend for Sony uh, the other lens I'm considering getting is the 16 millimeter Sigma as you can imagine yeah so thanks for watching and bye okay.